Good morning. Thank you for joining us at St. David's today. And before we begin our worship service, we just have a, a quick announcement for everybody. First of all, as we prepare for our Christmas celebration, if you'd like to help sponsor our Christmas decorations or inside or out in loving memory of a loved one or in celebration of a special event, please uh, fill out, get one of these forms. They have them in the church office or on Sundays next, more, next week. So please uh, come in and we'll be sure to recognize all the special donations during our Christmas celebration. Also, as we've wrapped up our annual stewardship emphasis, um, we just wanted to let everyone know that we're still collecting um, commitment cards for the 2021 budget. And these are valuable tools for our ministry as well as for each individual as we uh, grow in faith and commitment. And as of this temple talk, we're down about 20 pledge cards from last year um, at this time. Um, so please, if you'd like to, over the next couple of weeks, to send in a, a pledge because we have extras, we can send you one, or they're in the church, because um, they are valuable for our ministry. Also, please know that each week we continue to rely on the financial giving of our members and, and friends. Um, we accept online giving, or you can mail in your offerings, or also drop them off at the church office. Even call and we'll run out and get it if it's easier. Um, whatever you can do, every bit helps, and we all have this ministry together, so please help as you're able. Please also uh, keep us in mind with your prayers and continue to join us worship in person or online um, throughout this Advent season and through our Christmas celebration. Now let's quiet our hearts and minds as we prepare for today's worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, the one who comes to wake us from sleep, who leads us into the light of grace. Amen. Amen. Let us now prepare the way of the Lord by confessing our sin against God and our neighbor. <clears throat> our indifference toward your coming, we confess to you, O Lord. Our desire to control time and seasons, we confess to you, O Lord. Our failure to be alert to signs of your presence in our midst, we confess to you, O Lord. Our lack of concern for those who come after us, we confess to you, O Lord. Our injustice toward people you came to save, we confess to you, O Lord. Comfort, O comfort, my people, says your God. In Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven, and all things are made new. Rejoice in this good news. Let us pray. 
Stir up the wills of your faithful people, Lord God, and open our ears to the words of your prophets, that anointed by your Spirit, we may testify to your light. We ask this for Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. First lesson. Though the people have returned to Jerusalem from exile in Babylon, they continue to face hardship and oppression. In the, in the language of the Jubilee year, described in Leviticus 25, the prophet, moved by the, the Spirit of the Lord, announces deliverance for those who are oppressed and comfort for those who mourn. A reading from the prophet Isaiah, the 61st chapter. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall, they, they shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former de devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. <clears throat> For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations, and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bride's groom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise <coughs> to spring up before all the nations. The word of the Lord. Be to God. <coughs> uh, we will now read responsibly Psalm 126. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, then were we like those who dream. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are glad indeed. Those who sow with tears will reap with songs of joy. testimony given by John. When the Jewish leaders sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you a prophet? He answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, Why then are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I'm not worthy to untie the thong or the sandal. This took place in Bethany across the Jordan where John was baptizing. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. 
You may be seated. <clears throat> a Sunday school teacher in Kansas reports to have had the following conversation with her class. If I were to be real generous and sold my house and my car and big garage sale and gave all my money to the church, would that get me into heaven? She asked the children in her, of her Sunday school class. No, all the children replied. If I were to be very hardworking and clean the church every day and mowed its lawn and kept everything neat and tidy, would that get me into heaven? Again, the answer was no. Well, then what if I were to be real friendly and was kind to animals and gave candy to all the children and loved my neighbor? Would that get me into heaven? Again, they all answered, no. Well, she continued, then what would I have to be to get into heaven? At which point a five-year-old boy raised his hand and said, well, I think you have to be dead. <laughs> Today's reading from scripture speaks about several deep theological concepts and ideas and make us think about some big churchy words. Words like salvation and mission. But when thinking about something like salvation, I always wonder, from what are we being saved? God's punishment? The devil? Our own sins? Death? All of which tends to make us think of salvation <clears throat> in terms of getting into heaven. And then such thinking inevitably leads to us to see mission as our work of getting as many people into heaven as possible. Further such thinking makes us ask questions like, who will be saved? Who will make it into heaven? And underneath it all is that little boy's assumption that the only thing you need to be to get into heaven is dead. In contrast to this mindset, we hear today from the prophet Isaiah and from John the Baptizer. Isaiah is a poet. And John, as we heard, is a man sent from God who came as a witness. Both Isaiah and John have something to say about salvation. And what they both seem to be saying is that salvation is not about another place and time. Rather, both Isaiah and John announce that salvation is the reality of this world as it should be. <clears throat> I mean, Isaiah offers a vision of just what salvation looks like. Good news being brought to the oppressed. The binding up of the broken heart. Proclaiming liberty to captives and release to prisoners comforting those who mourn, encouraging the faint of spirit. These are the recipients of God's good news, of God's salvation. The poor, the oppressed, the brokenhearted, captives, prisoners, the mournful, the faint of spirit. And our mission to and with and among them defines God's people as those people who exist for the sake of others. <clears throat> Further, Isaiah, the, pro the prophet and poet, says, we'll know that we're involved in God's mission, God's saving work, when others, the nations of the world, notice that God's people live differently. That is, we live for God and for others, all others. As he wrote in an earlier chapter, Isaiah, the poet, says, I will give you as a light to the nations, that my salvation may reach the ends of the earth. This theme of the light also plays heavily throughout John's Gospel. We see it in our reading today from the first chapter, where it's interesting to know that John is named not John the Baptizer, as we hear in Mark, or John the Baptist, as we hear in Matthew. Or even John, the son of Zechariah, as we hear in Luke. Rather, John is simply a man sent from God as a witness 
to testify to the light. The light, of course, is the Word, which was been with God, is God, since before creation. And as it says in the first chapter of John, through him all things were created, and without him not one thing came into being. Then this word, or light, we're told, became flesh and dwelt among us. That in the person of Jesus, God pitched a tent among us and shared in our lives. And as God's word and light, Jesus grew up and lived in our midst. And one day he would read in his home, hometown synagogue this very lesson that we just heard from Isaiah 61. And declare, today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. That is to say that the time is now to begin living out this vision of salvation and mission that Isaiah proclaimed. It's time to start seeing salvation as the reality of this world, as it should be. It's this vision of salvation and mission to which John was sent to witness. You see, John's role is to recognize the true light that is common to the world, the light that the darkness cannot overcome, and to call attention to this light so that others might recognize it and believe. Belief in this sense means to, to recognize and to trust and to admit, to admit our lives to the light, the light which is fulfillment of Isaiah's vision. This in turn means to commit ourselves to the kind of salvation and mission that Isaiah proclaims and that John recognizes and that Jesus lives out and that both John and Jesus called us to follow so that our lights, lives might become a light to the nations. We began our worship service today on this third Sunday of Advent by praying together, stir up the wills of your faithful people, Lord God, and open our ears to the words of your prophet, that anointed by your spirit, we may testify to your light. But will we take the time this Advent to allow God to stir things up within us and within our church and throughout the world so that we might become more like John, a man sent from God? For that is, in fact, who we really are, men and women sent from God as witnesses to testify to the light so that all might believe through us. This idea popped into my mind a couple weeks ago as I looked out our window and saw a huge and bright full moon. And as I looked at this beautiful moon glowing in the night sky, I recalled learning as a little kid that the moon doesn't give off any light by itself, but rather it appears to shine because it reflects the light of the sun. And it suddenly dawned on me that this, what the moon was doing, is exactly what we are to do. But don't get me wrong. I don't want people leaving here today and telling everyone that your pastor <laughs> told you to go around mooning everybody. <laughs> that really wouldn't be appropriate. Rather like the moon, I think we are to shine brightly in a dark world by reflecting the light, the light of the sun, S-O-N. And maybe, just maybe, as we reflect and bear witness to this light, we will embody the light and become those who bring good news to the oppressed and bind up the broken heart and provide comfort for those who mourn and offer encouragement to the faint of spirit. Become those who reveal the life of Christ anew in the world, a world that is increasingly desperate to see and to know the light. As it says in the beginning of John's Gospel, 
in this light is life. And the life was the light of all people. You see, all people are looking up to us to see this light. And when all that we say and all that we do reflects and bears witness to the light, I believe that heaven and salvation will be understood not as simply a time and place after we die, but rather as the world as it should be, right here and right now. Amen. watchful, 
with your eyes on Christ, whose birth in the manger is but a promise of his coming again in glory. May the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you now and forever.